everybody. Welcome to the conclusion, the last part of this very interesting uh, shockwave, shock week, with, together with Vascopedia. I am very honored to be sitting here with uh, two great friends and great colleagues, Giacomo Isernia from Perugia and Stefano Fazzini from Rome, both from Italy. Um, both of them have more than 15 years experience with more than 200 EVAR, BVAR, FIVAR, TVAR cases, whatever you want to name it. So I'm very happy and honored to be here with them together today um, to tell you something about um, problems that we face with calcium uh, during endograft delivery. I'm going to start by sharing my screen and also with the first poll question to see what kind of audience we have at the moment. Are you currently using IVL in your uh, practice to facilitate endograft delivery? Easy question. I'll just uh, answer by yes or no. You will have time to answer this question during the next few minutes. So that's not going to be a problem. And we're going to dive right into it. The problem we face nowadays with hostile calcified access is that has to it used to be an exclusion criteria for EVAR and TVAR, it still is. And we know that if we have if we encounter complications, we know that they are associated with not only perioperative but also with long-term mobility and mortality. This is, a, for example, a case. This was a female patient with a thoraco thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm, and we want to exclude the aneurysm in two steps by first delivering a, a thoracic endograft and after that uh, performing a diva. But uh, what happened, of course, was that I ruptured the calcified narrow uh, external iliac artery, despite the fact having a low profile device with 18 French. So, of course, what are the solutions we have? In this case, I uh, put in, of course, covered stent grafts. In this case, this was Viaban. I post it with a, a large balloon and tried to deliver the first pass in the graft, but I failed. And so I had to do an iliacofemoral bypass, then put in the TVAR, and then a second time we had to uh, finish up with the uh, BVAR uh, branched endograft, as you can see here. So we have the possibility to perform an iliacofemoral bypass or an open conduit. We can do this kind of paving and cracking technique, as I've shown you here, by implanting uh, a covered stent graft per sometimes you uh, inadvertently uh, close your uh, internal iliac artery as well. So that's not good, especially if you're treating uh, uh, thoracoabdominal artic aneurysms because uh, you need them for uh, avoiding the risk of a spinal cord ischemia. And you can do this kind of endoconduits as well. So if we can have the poll question results up now. Yeah, 75% are using IVL. To Already, okay, that's delivery. great. That's amazing. Okay. A large aneurysm, six centimeter. We planned a stage procedure with cardiosuclavian bypass and TVAR. In this case, patient are the, are the availability uh, and uh, the best for, for the patient. We choose the Bolton relay plus that is uh, 25 French out of diameter, means uh, more than 8.2 millimeters. So um, in your opinion, Michel and Giacomo, which is the best iliac axis for endograft uh, in this case? We can see a small axis uh, with the uh, not so tortuous anatomy, but very, uh, so an extensive an uh, extensive calcified disease with the spots calcifications. But uh, I would like to have your answer after the first angiogram, uh, because of course it was not so uh, heavily calcified uh, one side or the other side. So we prefer to start with a simple angiogram. And what do you think, which is the best uh, iliac axis? To be honest, both sides look like a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but probably the left is a little bit better than the other, but of course it is not very nice both. Uh, right, Giacomo, I, I totally agree with you, fully agree, because if we take a look of the uh, calibrated catheter, we can observe that probably the right external was less than four millimeters, and also the left external was not so uh, big, but uh, we yeah uh, we agree and uh, we choose the left one 
uh, there, there is a sort of vessel analysis, but, so this is not a clear recommendation, but uh, we can observe how was the volume of this calcium. We have these uh, 4.6 millimeter uh, of minimum lumen diameter, uh, but we have no clear recommendation for iliac axis. So we can consider it as moderate because it is less than 180 degrees, but also moderate severe looking at other classification because uh, we have a calcium on both sides of the artery. So it is a problem for the compliance. And we should consider many other things uh, in the Lea Australia axis. So the minimum lumen diameter, the most important uh, bubble for concentric lesion, the referent vessel diameter is uh, of course important to choose uh, uh, our endograft and also to uh, size the uh, IVL uh, the length of the lesion and the side of the lesion. In many cases, like in the case from Jagon, we have uh, the lesion, the aortic bifurcation, but it's very important the proximal external, the external, because the external usually is the, the smaller vessel. And uh, in this location, we have the small vessel, uh, not heavily calcified probably, uh, because we can look also worse the lesion, but with, with large profile. So we every time we should match these two things, so the device and our vessel. So a vessel, large profile, 25 French. In this case, the profile was 80% larger than the minimum lumen diameter. So three simple steps, choose the best iliac axis, focus on the worst lesion, in this case, middle, the mid external on the left, and compare your lesion with the best device that you could, of course, uh, have available. In this case, of course, we are speaking about thoracic graft. So we don't have a really ultra low profile graft. So if you take a look of the angiogram, 11 French, this was 11 French, you can admit that this angiogram uh, is, uh, this, is describing us that probably it, this external was uh, four millimeters. We tried, of course, the doctoring technique. So go with uh, increasing diameter dilators, but we were not, not able. This was the first experience with the IVL uh, almost two years ago. Uh, IVL uh, M5, it was uh, the, the previous um, catheter. Uh, this was the first cycle. You can observe how the dilatation was um, very good. After six cycle, observe how it changed the vessel. So really incredible, the luminal gain, but it was incredible to cross, uh, uh, of course, without pu pushing a lot, to cross the lesion, of course, by using the, uh, again, the increased uh, di uh, dilators, uh, we crossed with the 20 French uh, outer diameter, we treated this patient uh, at the aortic, at the other aortic arch, but I, I would like to show you the post-operative angiogram. So the angiogram was uh, really good without any signs of dissection, but above all, this kind of uh, post-operative CT scan, again, we had no dissection, we had no bailout stenting, and we have an increasing luminal gain uh, and uh, this uh, sort of uh, new uh, conformation, conformability of this uh, structure, uh, changing the structure of the calcium, uh, we could uh, uh, achieve these uh, uh, results and have a safe procedure. Okay, it's a pleasure to, to start with the, the third case uh, from today uh, because uh, we are changing the indication in this case. Uh, as you told Michel, uh, we have two main indications. One, one is the graph delivery and one when we have an aortic disease that is associated to aortic occlusive disease, like in this case, we have, of course, uh, uh, taking into consideration also the luminal gain, not only the vessel compliance to, uh, of course, increase the safety of our procedure, but uh, to guarantee also dependency and increase the flow. This in the main indication in this patient is the peripheral disease. In this patient, a male with the rest pain on the right leg with the CTO of the right external, uh, about nine centimeter, and the long SFA occlusion with the, a tight stenosis at the level of the common iliac bilaterally, uh, as you can see. But you, you can clearly see this picture with two uh, eccentric uh, calcification, I could say 90%, with 1.5 millimeter uh, minimal lumen diameter, 
uh, with a small aneurysm, uh, it was with the rapid growing. So uh, we uh, would like to treat this kind of patient with an EVAR. So we like to treat the, the associated um, um, pathology. Uh, in this case, we had uh, we had the opportunity for abdominal area to choose a lateral profile, so 14 French, but we have very severe calcium, a small caribel, and aortelia coccusive disease. In case of female, we have also very smaller uh, ca caliber. Uh, and in this case, we have uh, four, 4 4.6 millimeter uh, other diameter stain graft that, that, that was three times the minimum lumen diameter. So. Uh, we choose the left axis that it was the best one because it was the patent one. Uh, the worst lesions were on the common uh, aliax and also, of course, the CTO of the external. And of course, the best device was, of course, the ultra low profile. We started with the vessel prep, so you can observe the uh, preparative angiogram. We started from left brachial axis, cook flex flexor, seven French in this case. Uh, we can observe the new M5 plus. This catheter is a, uh, six French up to seven millimeter. This is very important because we could use also a six French from the brachial axis, but we use the seven, the seven French for other reason. Uh, it's very important to rotate the, um, the C arm to observe the better uh, dilatation of the balloon and the, the um, energy transfer of our, of our lithotripsy. Uh, and so you can observe very smooth transition uh, at, with, a gentle, uh, with a gentle crossing of the main lesion uh, on the left side with this uh, ultra low profile graft and the proximal common artery. You can observe now uh, with the slow uh, crossing, we can observe this uh, gentle maneuver that of course is very important to avoid any dissection, any rupture for our patient. So uh, let's go on with the, the uh, next step. Uh, we decide to deploy the endograph and then uh, come from above and to cannulate the contralateral limb to do the vessel prep uh, for the right common iliac artery, again, with other uh, four cycle of M M5 plus at this location. And for this reason, by using a covered stand, in this case, seven millimeter on the right, eight on the, on the left, we molded this, uh, the, this cover stand with a 12 millimeter balloon, and we used cover stand in place of uh, aortic limbs. And uh, of course, we think that this could guarantee a better radial force in this sort of very calcified lesion. And at the end, third step, third solution for this uh, chronic occlusion. So recanalization, in this case, predilatation, IVL, self-expandable covered stand, and then a POBA. Uh, in this case, I like to stress the concept of uh, intraluminal, uh, intraprocedural uh, duplex scan control is very important to, of course, uh, uh, we have this kind of uh, view of the compassion angiogram that, that, that is uh, uh, fantastic for us with symmetric outflow, no endolic, but it's very important in case of suboptimal angiogram also have a duplex scan. Um, this is uh, the comparison between pre-op and post-op uh, angiograms with the EBI index that increased from 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 uh, on the right side where the SFA was uh, occluded. We closed the procedure with a gentle PTA or depogastic. It is very important uh, in all patients above all for peripheral disease and we can observe the luminal gain that we achieved and also the luminal gain that we achieved here on the external. So how uh, we crack the calcium, we, do modi we modify the structure of the calcium. We can observe the volume rendering with, a, uh, with a, a better luminal gain, with a better compliance. Uh, and again, <coughs> I like to show the comparison between pre-op uh, duplex scan with a monophasic flow and the triphasic flow on the postoperative CD scan, uh, on the postoperative duplex scan is very important because this is not, this is something that we, we can use uh, uh, during the procedure to check uh, the uh, the results and of course uh, also for mid uh, and long term outcomes is very uh, useful. Thank you. Had you had any? complications so far using this device because we're using this device now in, in large vessels. Um, we've seen on, on Monday and Wednesday uh, to treat uh, the peripheral disease. 
now we're using it to treat not only peripheral disease, iliac disease, but also uh, before a uh, large bore axis. Have you seen any complications? Because you know we're gonna we have to go through uh, some very narrow, very calcified, hostile axis, as you showed us clearly, Stefan, at the beginning. Any complications so far? In my experience, uh, Michelle, I, I never reported a complication with IVL uh, using uh, it, of course, in this setting. Uh, in this last case, of course, the origin of the common uh, iliac artery is uh, dissected, but is uh, strictly dependent to the recanalization uh, that we have done and not uh, to the IVL technology. And uh, uh, in all the other cases, I have no rupture, no dissection, uh, no, complica no complication at all with this device. Stefano? Yeah, the same for me. Uh, I had no complication. Uh, yeah, no rupture, no dissection. And uh, just in one case, uh, probably the second of our uh, uh, Australiac experience, uh, we, uh, we needed the, the paving and cracking after the IVL. So in an, another a very in a female uh, thoracic endograft with a small uh, external. So uh, probably was the only uh, pegging cracking uh, afterwards. Uh, and um, so in the, I, I, I totally agree. Uh, and we had also no embolization also for peripheral use. Uh, uh, and uh, probably the subintimal use could be also a solution for the FEMPOP disease. Other question, since you've been using IVL, yeah, how many iliac or femoral bypasses or endoconduits, Stefano, you just mentioned one case, or any kind of other therapy did you need to perform since starting to use IVL? I, in my experience, I've had zero uh, open or endoconduits so far after starting to use this device. What about you guys? Uh, from my side, uh, zero surgical conduit and just one uh, endoconduit. But uh, because uh, in that case we didn't use IVL, uh, but the problem is uh, the, the the size of the artery uh, is a female with a hypoplastic uh, external iliac artery and uh, no calcium, and uh, uh, we try uh, to to perform the endoconduit as first. Uh, line strategy for this patient, but it's a quite different pathology in my mind. Yeah, uh, I, I like like Giacomo. I I didn't have any open conduits, and uh, I agree. So we should uh, consider the presence of calcium or not. So uh, we could have also uh, women, for example, with with small access but without calcium. So it's totally different story. So in this case, uh, we cannot solve uh, anything with the with the IVL. So we should use IVL in presence of severe calcification. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's also important, uh, uh, really, not only to guarantee uh, to, for for a better uh, a better solution for the procedure, but also to guarantee uh, a better uh, iliac expansion to our iliac limbs. So and also to avoid the stenting, so the bilout stenting. Uh, and as mentioned from 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 Giacomo, it's very important to keep patent the hypogastric arteries for many reasons, for peripheral reason, for spinal cord ischemia. So it's uh, really uh, it's like the profunda for the peripheral. So it's really very very important uh, to uh, keep the hypogastric open. Fully agree, Stefano. Fully agree. Question from the audience. Um, is there any, have we experienced any embolization so far, peripheral embolization? I didn't have uh, uh, any embolization, neither for uh, iliac cases, because I'm using uh, uh, lithotripsy also for peripheral iliac cases, not, not just in case of uh, no. uh, associated aortic aneurysm, and also for FEMPOP disease. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, a lot of experience with the BTK uh, procedures, but I did observe uh, embolization with, uh, with the standalone therapy, lithotripsy as standalone therapy, or associated with ECB up to now. Um, Michelle, probably we are uh, abusing uh, uh, the term of game changer. So we know how, how many, many physicians are using this term 
uh, to validate some new device, new technology. But really, I am really a believer of this term in case of IVL. So really, uh, the little trip C, the shock with IVL is changing uh, my, my daily working for uh, peripheral disease to treat hostile access or for aortic disease. Uh, I don't want to say for uh, other disease because uh, I, I would like to stay into the indication for use, but really uh, the uh, calcium is the main hostile enemy of vascular surgeon. So really now we have a, a, a solution. We could really change the compliance we could improve the luminal gain. We could really um, change the structure of the calcium without, uh, in a safe way, in a simple way, because it's just inflating a catheter, a balloon. And uh, I think that we are changing the way of working. Fully agree. There's one last poll question for the uh, participants. Has this session convinced you to introduce IVL into your practice to facilitate endograph delivery? And while you answer this question, um, I think one of the bigger, one of the major points also mentioned by Giacomo is that, I mean, there's one thing about endograft delivery, but the second thing is also, especially if you're using fenestrated or branch devices or even in, in general EVAR, um, you sometimes need to be able to rotate your device during um, um, delivery. Um, to get your branches, your fenestrations aligned with your with your target vessels, and this is something that a tight stenosis with with a lot of calcium will prohibit you. And I think this is also one of the major points where IVL can really um, help us. <laughs> ah, here are the results. <laughs> we are like you. We are like you. One hundred percent. So <laughs> I think the session uh, uh, was a, was a success. Was yes, fully um, appreciated. Definitely. <laughs> Um, everything will be uploaded also on Vascopedia website uh, where there will be a question section as well or comment section and uh, uh, Stefano, Giacomo and myself will make sure that we uh, also go there to answer any uh, remaining questions that we have. Um, I think the three of us will can continue for at least uh, three more days discussing and talking about uh, nice cases and how this was a game changer um, for us in not only facilitating endograft delivery, but also prohibiting um, limb occlusion by achieving this luminal gain uh, and treating these kind of patients with a, a combination of, of aneurysm and arteriliac occlusive disease. So um, thank you also for Shockwave. Thank you, Vascopedia. Thank you, Vascopedia. Thank you, OneView, for making this uh, event possible. And I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your evening. and. Uh, go into a well-deserved uh, free weekend. Thank you, everybody, and bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.